Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story, hotel guests behaved disgustingly and were included on the do not rent list. The second story, woman ordered all the yellow flowers in the store and received them. The third story, I left work and the boss asked me for help after that, but I don't work there anymore. Today's first story is Hotel Revenge Disclaimer, I'm the assistant general manager of a hotel. This is from the sub Tales from the Front Desk. So this was a while ago. Last Thursday was quite the doozy of a shift. Right off the bat I came into a shady looking couple hassling the new girl. The moment I came in she said, there's my supervisor he can help you, which I couldn't. They were trying to use someone else's card with no ID or wait for the person on the card to come in and sign not even a means to contact them. So all the fraud red flags went, and I refused to rent to them. The two leave in a huff. Soon as she leaves, I get slammed with a 20-room wedding block and a few walk-in road crews checking in at the same time. The crews were guys we'd been housing for months now, so they had everything ready, and the wedding block was easy enough as well. But then came the ex-cops. I suggest the original post be read, but again, not necessary. Suffice to say I should have put them on the do not rent list. They acted as if the whole incident from last time had never happened, and so did I to be professional about it. This time it was the husband's cousin being married off this weekend. Everyone was checked in, and the rest of the shift passed without notice. The next shift I'm on the overnight. I come at 11, do the usual things, and head off to close the pool. When I go in, there's a group of the wedding party people at a table, with a cooler full of beer on the table, and sure enough the ex-cops were there. Me. The pool's closing, and for the future there's no alcohol allowed in the pool area, I say and point at the sign clearly saying so. Man, the girl from earlier said it was fine. Woman, yeah, why do you have to be a buzzkill? Me, it's against our safety policy. Please leave now so I can lock up. Ex-cop husband, see, see, what I tell you, this one was going to come ruin our fun any minute now. He downs his bottle and tosses it in a trash can. Me. Please just comply and everyone refrain from doing this again, and we will have no issue. I'm letting this slide just this once. I stand and wait for them to clear out. Ex-cop wife. Yeah, yeah, we're going, ya F. I hold my tongue and just let them leave the pool area. It's locked up and I walk back to the desk. An hour later I get a call. I start to give the customary greeting, but I'm interrupted by a drunken tirade from who I know is the husband. The short and nasty of it is they went on a beer run to a store in walking distance and can't get in the side entrance. I say I'll be there in a minute, hang up and take a minute to brace myself before going in. I find them and let them in, and the wife tears into me with her arms creating like a bag of booze. Wife, the heck kind of hotel are you running? Are you just messing with us or do you do this to all your guests? Husband, look effer, I was feeling sorry about last time, but this SH is just immature, locking us out, you effer. Me, I did not lock you two out and you do need to lower your... Wife comes up to my face and with a free hand jabs me in the chest to cut me off. Don't BS me, F. Come morning I'm talking to your boss and you're fired. I'm very agitated at this point and I swat her finger away. Do not touch me and if you keep acting like this, I will call the police. The husband drops his load of booze and comes up to me just like before. You just hit my wife and threaten us, Effer? Then he pushes me. That was it. Without another word, I walk away to call the cops. The husband yells after me some macho BS about how I'm not man enough to take him on or call the cops. About 20 minutes later I'm proving him wrong. The officers come to the desk and ask him which room they're in. Soon after the man from the pool earlier comes to the desk in his bathrobe, begging me to not have the couple evicted. He has the room next to theirs. Man, I know he has anger issues when he's had too much, but can you please just not do this? Tomorrow is a big day for my family. Me, then I'm sorry he has to miss it. Both have been verbally abusive and your brother pushed me. The verbal abuse alone gives me more than enough reason to evict them. If it's any consolation I'm not charging them with assault, just drunk and disorderly conduct, which the officers are seeing for themselves. Man, it's not. You've ruined a wedding. Me, then I'm sorry for that, but I'm well within my rights. Of course I only said I was sorry in both instances because I have to. It's not on me for ruining the wedding. It's on them. I'm just doing my job and don't care if someone else differs with how this should have been handled. I know revenge is a dish best served cold, but I got my ice cream and don't feel guilty at all. Update. And as for afterwards the couple tried to be their way into a refund, to which the owner slash GM said essentially, ha ha ha, you must still be drunk. 
No idea the outcome of the wedding itself, since they were just renting the rooms, not our event space, and I heard nothing else about the matter. And yes, they're both on the do not rent list for our property, and all brand properties we're part of. The next story is, you want all the yellow flowers we have? No problem. It's that time of year for flower shops, and I recently saw a guest who hasn't been to the shop since the events of this story from a couple of years ago. I was freshly cross-trained onto the sales floor of my flower shop, and had just started answering the phones by the registers. Incoming phone calls from guests are set up to go to the phone center lines first, but forward to the floor if no one answers. I was the lucky one to answer a particularly grumpy regular we'll call May. May already had issues with me because I was new, and I had issues with her because I don't let people walk all over me, customer or not. She also was a generally problematic customer, I was just her current target for being new. The phone call goes something like this. Me, local flower shop, this is Potato speaking, how may I help you? May, Potato? No, I need someone else. Me, I'm sorry, no one else is available. A lie, but no one was near a phone. How can I help you, May? May, I need yellow flowers. Me, what kind of flowers? May, just yellow flowers. Are you so slow you don't know what yellow flowers are? Me, well we have a large selection of yellow- May, you know what, just give me all of them. Me, all of them? May, are you deaf? Yes, all of them, and charge it to my card on file so I can just grab them and go. At this point I wave over the sales manager and switch the call to speaker so he can hear it. Me, okay, so just clarifying May, that you want all of the yellow flowers we have in stock, and May, yes, and charge it to my card. I've wasted enough time talking to you about it. I don't want to wait for my receipt at the counter. I'll be there in two hours. I raise an eyebrow at the sales manager. He gives me a bewildered thumbs up and head nod, and I tell her we'll have it ready. Sales manager and I then proceed to pull roses, spray roses, chrysanthemums, snapdragons, literally hundreds of bunches of flowers. We're the biggest florist in the state, and we get the mums in boxes of 24, and never less than 15 boxes a week, so that honestly took up a majority of it. The entire time, sales manager is saying how May will never actually take all of this, but he doesn't like people sassing off to his workers, so he was more than willing to play along. He did have the foresight to not charge her card, as when we finished ringing everything up, it came to a whopping $1,000 plus order. Between the two of us and some helping hands here and there, some of the other sales clerks learned what happened. It took a good portion of those two hours to get everything together, and sales manager had to leave before we were finished, to handle a different matter. May comes in, already glaring at me, and asks where her order is. I smile at her and gesture at the 20 or so buckets of yellow flowers surrounding the pickup area. It honestly looked like a display we had so many buckets. While she's doing her best imitation of a suffocating fish, I tell her as nicely as possible, I just wanted to check that you wanted this order charged to one card, since $1,000 is a lot of money. You could hear her brain short circuit before she went beat red and said, this isn't what I meant, where's sales manager? I call him over on the radio, and sure enough as soon as he comes over, he's asking May if we pulled enough yellow flowers, and that we had more coming in early tomorrow morning if she wanted them. She starts stuttering about how this isn't what she ordered, and how incompetent Potato is etc, until sales manager says, Potato confirm with you that you wanted all the yellow flowers in stock, and these are all the yellow flowers in stock. If you wanted specific flowers or quantities, you would have to specify those with our sales clerk when placing your order. At this point she grabs an armful of daisies and some roses and stomps off to the registers. The store got a rather nasty email with me mentioned by name about my incompetency and rude behavior, but sales manager corroborated my side of the story. Cameras showed I at least appeared nothing but friendly the whole interaction, and the number of other incidents regarding this particular guest basically ended with, if you can't be nice to our workers don't shop here responding email. We were scolded for wasting two hours when we knew she wouldn't take all of it, and there were other things to do. But we did exactly what the customer said, so not much else happened repercussion-wise. The last story is Compliance by not doing my job I used to work as a programmer at a manufacturing facility. Back in the mid-2000s, we added the ability to order certain products online. My job was to build a service that would accept the order request from the main website and print out labels in the warehouse, which then got stuck onto the individual items in the order. The labels were printed on stickers, some were round and some were rectangular. We had two special printers hooked up for this, little things about the size of label makers that took spools of stickers instead of trays of paper. This is where all the fun happens. My boss was a total SH head. He was supposed to be in a tech lead or technical manager type of role, but his knowledge of technology was horrible. We should just build the entire website in Perl slash CGI, like the ones I used to do. 
Translation, I'm too dumb and or lazy to learn anything about new technologies. His management skills weren't any better. On the day he joined the company, the first thing he said to us after mutual introductions was, I used to work for the IRS, so don't ever peeve me off or I'll ruin your life. I still have back doors I put in there. He kinda half acted like he was joking, but seemed half serious as well. He said this another time too, out of the blue at some team lunch or something. Really weird and off-putting and highly unprofessional. Not to mention unethical and possibly illegal. And no, there's no way he had put in any back doors. He couldn't find his own back door with a mirror on a stick. Anyway, my last project at that company was the label printing service. I put in my two weeks notice around the time I started working on it. Because SH Boss had no planning skills, he insisted that I just plan for doing the actual coding so I could get it done before I left. He didn't want me to waste time on documentation or knowledge transfer. It's a small system. The other guys can figure it out if there are problems. We need to get it up and running ASAP. Okie dokie, code only it is. Full compliance with Mr. SH Boss's orders. I get the first pass deployed with a couple days to spare and spend most of that time tweaking and hardening it and trying to get some sort of documentation in place for the less obvious bits of it. There wasn't much there when I left. Fast forward two weeks. I'm at my new job and my former coworker Tom calls me. Tom hated SH Boss as much as I had, but it turns out SH Boss had put him up to making the call. Hey, Het, SB wants to ask you something. Do you have a minute? I told him to put him on, while wondering why the idiot didn't just call me himself. Presumably, he thought I'd ignore him. I wouldn't have, partly because I try not to be a D, and partly out of morbid curiosity. SH Boss was very polite to me, as he told me how the printers had just stopped working, and asked if I had any idea what the problem might be. Needless to say, I was gobsmacked. I held back my snarkier thoughts and just reminded him politely that I don't work there anymore, and without actually being on site to examine the system, there was no way I could help anyway. Okay, thanks anyways, bye. I found out later from Tom that the printers had been down for a few days, and SH Boss was in a panic, cursing my name to all and sundry. One of his many stellar management qualities was an ability to go straight to yelling and trying to assign blame, skipping straight past all that pesky focusing on what went wrong and how to fix it BS. He actually went so far as to suggest I had deliberately sabotaged the system. It turned out that the real root of the problem was that the print settings had just reverted, or been reverted to the defaults, so the software was running against the wrong paper size, and in one case the wrong orientation. One of the things I didn't document was that the print setup had to be configured specifically for the small round labels and the small rectangular 90 degree rotated labels. I didn't document that because one, I figured getting the paper size and orientation correct would be self-evident to anybody who had ever used a printer before. And two, did I mention SH Boss told me not to waste time on that frippery? If you're wondering how incompetent Tom must have been to not have found the problem sooner, it's because SH Boss was riding herd on him to suss out where I had effed up the code. I hope you love these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out.